Well, for, for me, just kind of reading the information, Chris sent me a lot of information. There was a lot of good information that reported by some Houston reporters. And um, it, it seems like he's qualified. And so I don't know the particulars in reference of his resume, what he's done and hasn't done. But I, I think from his time in the LSU, from his time previously at New Mexico, I think he's ready. I mean, I, I think he's qualified. And so uh, I'm love to hear Chris's perspective because I think he can give more of a deep dive and more informational dive on, on Mr. Nunez. I think it's a solid hire. He was initially reported as the front runner. And then Ryan Alpert came in, kind of swooped in at the last minute, really, according to uh, some sources, and made it to the final two, the two finalists between Nunez and Alpert. Um. Uh, Nunez has been an AD before. Ryan Alpert, I think, was been in the deputy position. Did a lot of success at Tennessee raising money, but Nunez did a lot of success, had a lot of success at LSU raising money. 400 million compared to 500 million. I mean, you wait to love either one of those numbers to, to come to, to athletics. So I'm kind of curious to see any of the viewers who don't like to hire, what are the reasons for it? Because I'm going to say this. I I reached out to some folks, colleagues in Memphis. Ryan Alpert worked at Memphis almost five years. He applied to be AD at Memphis. Memphis did not hire him. Okay. So he worked there for five years, but they didn't hire him as AD. So there's some reason for that. He's had great success at Tennessee in this two plus years he's been there but it sounds like Tillman and President Couture wanted someone who has had AD experience or as the official title is Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics <laughs> so Eddie Nunez I look forward to working with him I hope he develops and maintains a relationship with Les Rage Cougs Paul Slamma Jamma Houston Round Ball Review and does not ignore us or run away from us when he sees us on campus at games. I'll say that publicly like a certain person did before who's no longer here. We're not trying to take personal shots. We are here to promote UH athletics. But we're also going to be critical if it's due and justified. And if you don't like that, well, that's a you problem. So we're not, we're not, we're not going to say it's all sunshine when it's not, that's not what, that's not our job. But that's part of what we do here on Less Rage Cougs is tell it like it is and tell it like it's been told to us and share that info and insight with our viewers. Yes, sir. Chris couldn't have said it any better myself. Now let's get into some specifics when it comes to the deal that Brian, Eddie Nunez to the University of Houston, like you mentioned, to be the new athletics director. Uh, it was officially stated in the release he's agreed to a five-year deal. The numbers behind it haven't officially been disclosed yet, but it, he's at least five years on the deal. And really the, the biggest things that stood out to me, and we can get a little bit more about uh, what some outlets are reporting about really the, the mindset when it comes to Renu Couture and Tillman Fertitta, but this is strictly based on the news release that they – um, shared when they officially released the news. Um, what stood out to me is specifically Tillman Fertitta's comments about the hire. And this is a direct quote again from the release in which Fertitta's quote is saying that Nunez joins a strong Cougars program with great head coaches already in place, which will allow him to focus on raising revenue and planning for the future of UH athletics. End quote. Again, that is from Tillman Fertitta quoted in the news release. And we said it throughout the process, even going back to Big 12 uh, media days, even when, when we asked both head coach Calvin Sampson and Willie Fritz uh, respectively, after shortly after they had made the move to move away from Chris Besman, Kelvin Sampson said one of the biggest things that that new athletic director is going to have to be able to do in this ever evolving world of college athletics, raise money. And we all heard from various different people when it comes to one of the main reasons why they decided to move away from Pesma is because he just wasn't cutting it in that department. And that's going to be the biggest focal point for Eddie Nunez in, in really succeeding in his role here. Um, in that quote in particular, 
great head coaches established. Chris, Chris Dan, we can get we can get a little bit in that as well. But we all agree that's the main focal point um, for UH with this hire. They need money. They need the athletics department to be able to kind of stand on its own in that department. That's going to be a crucial aspect in whether Nunez is successful or not at the University of Houston. Yeah, Nunez comes into a unique situation. I mean, basketball head coach, set, solid. Football mm-hmm. head coach has already been hired. So the two biggest hires typically for an AD are out of his hands, are out of his control. Now he can focus yep. on money and also focus on hiring other coaches who have not performed up to par and clearly up to the Kelvin Sampson standard that has been set on campus. And I hope, I hope that Mr. Nunez is not afraid to pull the trigger on making changes in coaches. And I hope he's given the leeway to do so. I'm going to say this, and Dayon and y'all can chime in, but I, I hope Eddie Nunez is allowed to do his job without interference from outside people, higher ups. He was hired here. He got a five-year deal here. Let him do his job. To piggyback right off what Chris is, is hinting at, I agree. I, let him do his job and let him hold coaches accountable for what they've produced up until this point. And I think this next season and, and certain coaches who haven't been able to produce wins um, as the standard that, that Coach Simpson set, I think the contracts and some of them are set up to where it's a prove a year. You prove it. Um, if you succeed and get over that hump, then potentially you may be extended or if not, you'll be held accountable. So it's kind of a, it's good. Like Chris said, the top two hires, when we're all some football, basketball already set now in those other sports, I feel like he can have that opportunity. If he's allowed, like Chris alluded to, to do his job and make the right, I don't want to say right decision, make a decision based on the results that they were able to produce in those respective sports, but raising money that that's the key thing. I mean, can, can he um, be able to reach, like Chris said in uh, our previous episode, some of those smaller alums business that can donate to certain amounts versus, I know you want the, the big corporations, but Houston is so big, has so many opportunities to network and, and get people to invest in Houston in the um, sports department. I think he has to exercise every avenue and, and look to reach as many people as he can versus going over those top big donors in which Houston has the ability to go after those as well. Andy, what do you what do you say? I think when it comes to, like I said, there was a lot of mixed reaction from UH fans about the hire. Um, to be honest, I think a lot of that mixed reaction is because, quite frankly, they just didn't know much about Eddie Nunez. At the end of the day, it comes out to a wait-and-see approach. Um, the biggest thing from what we've seen, one, in the news release and even uh, what other outlets have reported, like uh, specifically from uh Paper City, Chris Baldwin uh, spoke with both for New Couture and Tillman Fertitta. And what really stood out to me about that story when it comes to uh, Renew Couture's mindset is that she was really blown away by there's some fire, there's something that she saw in Nunez. Um, that really stood out throughout the entire process. Now, uh, going back to, like we mentioned, how long it took um, this process to get an athletic director. Tillman Fertitta said the reason for it is because of they vetted out the process, uh, whether that's the exact reason why it took almost two months for the process. Hopefully that is the case. And then they, they got the actual guy that they wanted. But at the end of the day, whether it's a success or not, it's going to come down to whether – He's able to generate money in that same article from Paper City. Renu Couture says she wants to double the revenue from the athletics department, which, I mean, that is a huge, huge goal that they that I mean, it sounds good on and on paper and it sounds good being said how realistic that happens um, within a five year window. If, if that's truly the the um, timetable that Nunez gets. He's going to have to be charismatic. He's going to have to find a way to get into conversations that, quite frankly, Pesman in the past um, just was not a part of. Because while there are a lot of different um, alums, different businesses, to get that type of money to double 
the revenue, it has to be those corporate sponsors, which there's a lot of competition when you look at, at the pro teams um, that have had that success. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, but the, those big corporate sponsors, not to limit it to one industry, but the key pivotal industry here in the city of Houston has to be some of that oil money. It's one of those oil companies. Get those into the University of Houston, which will be difficult in the state of Texas because of well, the, the big two across the state, which is AM and 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 UT. They've got to find a way to get some of that money into campus at the University of Houston. That's how you're going to be able to reach that goal. So hopefully Nunez is charismatic. We mentioned what he's done in, in previous stops, um, and really they touted his success at LSU. He was a part of uh, when the university was raised for oh, around $400 million for different facilities that they constructed and renovated, and, and even what he was able to do at New Mexico, he's going to have to come in here and, and, and find the most success at the University of Houston because that's clearly what they want outside of just the actual success when it comes to the sports teams because, Chris, like you said, they're set when it comes to basketball and football. Kelvin Sampson's going to be here for as long as, however, Kelvin Sampson wants to be the, the head coach at U of H. And once he, he does decide that he's going to move on, they already have that plan in pay, place. It's going to be Kelvin Sampson that takes over. And the same thing for football. Like, Willie Fritz is going to be here for the foreseeable future. So he doesn't have to worry about those two programs for the at least for the next two, three years. His main focus is how do we get that revenue to, in the case of Couture, double over the course of the next few years.